Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. And yes, we're still on the floor, but hopefully that shall be changing very soon. A couple of weeks ago, when we were also on the floor, we made a video about a clip from the Australian Senate inquiry into excess deaths that was being shared by anti-vaxxers. The video featured an Australian doctor who was talking absolute bollocks about the Pfizer trial. And in the video, Cindy and I explained why she was talking bollocks. But there were a lot of other interactions during the Senate inquiry that haven't gone viral. If I was to guess why, I would say it's because they didn't show what the anti-vaxxers were hoping. These interactions start with an anti-vax senator asking what they think is a gotcha question, followed by an answer that makes it clear that they didn't get the gotcha they were hoping for. So in this video, Cindy and I will show you a few of these clips and add a little bit of extra stuff to it as well. Reality is, is that temporal association is a significant indicator of causation, uh, and within that time frame there, you've said that it's not unusual for deaths to jump around May. Uh, generally, I've looked at that data series, they generally jump around July, so winter kit kicks in in July, June, it takes about a month with the secondary bacterial infection, so they generally spike in Ju July or September. But the significant thing about the jump in deaths was this jumped in May, the month after the vaccine rollout deaths jumped, spiked, uh, will cause mortality, that is, blunt that it is. Uh, and then it basically went through for the next two years. So there was no se seasonal variance. Um, there was just a, a spike and it, you know, it's come off a little bit, but it wasn't like a temporal thing associated to the winter. It was more temporally associated to the rollout of the vaccine. Ooh, that certainly sounds like a gotcha. Let's have a listen to the answer. As you noted, I'm a time series person, so I don't want yeah. to disparage the power of time series analysis. I think it's very powerful. Um, in terms of um, the exact example that, that you're talking about, let's say the, um, the rise in mortality in May of 2021, 2021 um, if you took uh, any given year um, over the last 10 years, it's very likely that you will see an increase in May compared to April. Um, and you would continue to see an increase into the peak of uh, flu season or season where we have respiratory illnesses. So that's a typical, um, typical thing that we see. The way um, I would, as a time series person, one way that I might look at this, and I have actually taken a look at it, would be to say, well, ex the concept of excess mortality actually takes into account seasonal variation. So I would be looking at... Um, rather than a spike or an increase in mortality during that period, rather than a month on month, month on month increase in mortality between, let's say, May and April, I would be looking at an increase in excess mortality because that takes out the seasonal factors that, that we normally uh, see. And but isn't that agreeing with what I just said, where we've just had a, a, a big jump and it hasn't really come off at all? So well, well to, to give some numbers, which I think are quite. Uh, useful. Um, th these numbers are based on uh, the ABS weekly reports and the, the challenge with the ABS weekly mortality numbers is it's hard to align them directly with a month, but doing my best to do that. If you look at um, excess mortality in 2021, uh, between January and April that was running at 1.9 per cent. And uh, after May, uh, it was running from May to December, post-vaccine rollout, it was running at 1.2%, so it was actually lower. Um, we have as well talked about potential reasons for higher mortality in 2021, and one of those uh, reasons is the concept of death displacement, which we would um, expect to see, particularly coming off the back of a relatively low mortality year in 2020, indeed one that had negative excess mortality. Ouch. So there were no excess deaths in May. Senator Rennick is talking bollocks. Just to explain what Dr Gould was talking about in terms of seasonal variation of deaths in Australia, the blue line on this chart shows 
expected deaths based on trends from 2020 to 2023. And it is clear that Dr Gould was correct. Deaths are expected to be higher in May than what they are in April. Also shown on this chart is the actual deaths that occurred in the yellow orangey colour and the actual deaths excluding COVID-19 deaths in dark red. It is very clear that excess deaths are being driven by COVID deaths. And if we look specifically at 2021, which is when the vaccine rollout occurred in Australia, you can see that all excess deaths are within the 95% bounds, which is shown by the light blue shading. So no gotcha there for Senator Rennick. But it's okay, he's got more up his sleeve. Okay, but you've just said on your bio, Department of Health, that you can access, the Department of Health can access the immunisation register. So why can't you access the immunisation register when it comes to analysing excess deaths? Because that's very important as well, because we've had a jump of 10,000 in 2021 and a jump of 28,000 in 2022. So I would have thought that was pretty critical. Well, that's certainly a good question. Why haven't they done this obvious work? Could this be the gotcha Senator Rennick is hoping for? Let's have a listen. To that point, um, the, the Department of Health is the custodian of the Australian Immunisation Register, so we do have access yep. to that information. Um, we've heard from the ABS and AIHW today about important data integration work that they've done. Um, Ms Jordan also alluded to the fact that we have, um, through the person-level integrated data asset, mm. which is managed by the ABS, we have uh, linked vaccination status with um, cause of death information, ABS cause of death information. Um, we have... Sorry, did you say that again? You have linked vaccination status to cause of death? That's correct, yes. OK, so we can then analyse deaths by vaccination status. Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, they have done the work. Still no gotcha for Senator Rennick. Now, the obvious question is, what was the answer? Were there more deaths in the vaccinated or in the unvaccinated? Strangely enough, Senator Rennick didn't ask that question, but he was followed by Senator Roberts, who is also an anti-vaxxer, who did ask the question. We also need to... Excuse me, Dr Gould, you can still have comparison of people who've had one vaccine, two vaccines, three shots, four shots, etc. Yeah, and, and what I wanted to, to get to, so you could do that with raw mortality rates, but as we've discussed, age is a really important factor for mortality, so age standardisation is really mm -hmm. important there. But there are other forms um, of work that we need to do to ensure that we're comparing like populations with each other, so effectively sure. we're, we're comparing statistical apples with, sure. with each other. Um, and that was the whole purpose of the... Um, the research that we commissioned by the National Centre for Immunisation Research and Surveillance, that they could do that, that challenging but really critical work so that they could give a better sense of the uh, mortality outcomes What's for the people. Um, so the answer is um, very clear that uh, COVID vaccines provided uh, significant protection against mortality from COVID. They also extended that um, research to all-cause mortality. As, as we've said, COVID was a large Can we get a copy of the report, that. please? Absolutely. It's publicly available. Oh, dear. That's not the answer he was hoping for at all. And by the way, what Dr Gould was trying to say before Senator Roberts cut him off was that deaths were also higher in the unvaccinated for all-cause deaths. This is the paper that Dr Gould is referring to here. Effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccination against COVID-19 specific and all-cause mortality in older Australians, a population-based study. And what they did in this study was they looked at the entire population of Australia over the age of 65, which is about 3.8 million people, and they specifically looked at the deaths that occurred in this population in 2022 and analysed them by vaccination status. 
And the reason they were looking at people over 65 as opposed to the entire population is because the vast majority of deaths in Australia occur in people over 65. And this is also the case for excess deaths. In fact, as you can see in this chart here, in 2021, when the vaccines were rolled out, there were no excess deaths in those under 65. In performing their analysis, the authors also adjusted for confounders, including age, comorbidities, sex, and how often they visited their GP. There were two main waves of COVID in 2022 in Australia, and the authors did the analysis for each wave. And they did this analysis for both COVID-specific mortality as well as all-cause mortality. What they have done in the analysis is they've used unvaccinated people as the reference group and then compared death rates in people with various doses and time since their last dose to determine vaccine effectiveness against death. As you can see, you were much less likely to die from COVID if you were vaccinated. And the benefit was greater if you had been vaccinated in the last six months. A similar pattern was also seen for all-cause mortality. Now remember, these are people over 65 where regular boosters of the COVID vaccine are recommended. Generally, younger people with robust immune systems don't require frequent bo boosters to be protected from COVID death. Despite ANC vax morons continually saying, get your booster, in the mistaken belief that it's a devastating insult. Now, you can see that there are a couple of vaccinated subgroups where the effectiveness is to the left of the vertical line for all cause mortality. The authors do explain this. And I'll just read out for you what they've said. It is also notable that vaccine effectiveness for all cause mortality was negative for some of the dose two intervals examined. These estimates were for small groups with relatively short follow up and are statistically less robust. They were also unusual in that they represented people who either completed their primary vaccine course over a year later than when they would have been eligible, June to November period or had their primary vaccine course early in the program, but no booster, January to May period. We hypothesise that they are predominantly individuals who may have serious health conditions, meaning they were unable to have primary vaccination until very late, or unable to be subsequently vaccinated. And this may explain their increased risk of death. As well as looking at all Australians aged over 65, the authors also looked at Australians who are living in aged care. And again, they saw the same pattern of COVID vaccination being associated with decreased COVID-specific mortality and decreased all-cause mortality. And again, there was some waning in effectiveness after six months. And this is important because thanks to the efforts of anti-vaxxers, not everyone who should be getting regular booster doses of COVID vaccine are doing so. By lying about the effects of vaccines, anti-vaxxers are killing people. The authors also looked at specific causes of death by vaccination status, including some types of death that anti-vaxxers like to pin on vaccines. In all cases, the vaccinated fared better than the unvaccinated. In particular, ischemic heart disease and cancer, which anti vaxxers often like to talk about and attempt to link to vaccination, were actually less likely to occur in vaccinated people. And this is not surprising, as severe COVID is known to increase your risk of dying from a number of other diseases and vaccination decreases that risk. So the anti-vaxxers did their best to try to link vaccines with excess deaths in Australia. Unfortunately for them, 
the research clearly shows they are wrong. Excess deaths are primarily linked to COVID and the activities of anti-vaxxers is likely making them worse. If you'd like to look further into the data I presented, I provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little sleepy Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future and we will be making them sitting on my new couch. Well, it's not a new couch, it's my old couch recovered. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.